fearless pioneer. Yo, what is going on guys? EJ here, bringing another Lord of the Rings Rise to War video. So today is a little bit of a Christmas present to me. I've been waiting for this day for at least two to three months now. We are going to be getting our first T3 Commander R10 unique weapon. And I think it's probably one of, if not the best item in the game. Not only just because of the lore and everything like that, but it's stats and everything. And so we're going to unlock it, look at builds and stuff like that. And then, of course, we're going to get into some PvP action. Been super uh, busy up here um, at the Grey Havens at the moment. I think I've relocated like four people in the last hour. Um, I've got myself a nice little 300 here. I'm currently, um, currently relocating my base very soon as well. So, And then I can focus on this area and that. But yeah, the today we're going to be focusing on who has slowly and fastly, I should say, has become my favorite commander in the game. And that is Isildur, guys. He is absolutely amazing. And I've finally got... The amount of points, me throw everything to unlock his special unique equipment, Narsil. So as you can see, this is what I got um with him at the moment, gear wise. We do have this beautiful axe of Kazakh Doom. Um, now I'm going to be working out what kind of gear I want to get rid of to strengthen it up. Um, I I will still have because I've got some refinement in the axe. I will still be able to make an axe. In the process of I'll be able to strengthen it up and make it not too bad so I won't be losing my axe completely but we will be using this axe to strengthen up my unique equipment so let's um, not muck around let's get into it so um, a sealed door I just want to oh, well, oh, let's get let's get it and then we'll explain so first off we had to capture Baradu at Barador as a good faction and basically um, it works as a United faction, they was glitched, but we got that fixed. Um, and then you just have to defeat 20 Mordor commander armies. You can use these on mobs. I just did mine with mobs. And then you just need to reach a ring to level 130. Super easy. And then 60 Mithra, which has taken me like two and a half months or so to collect. So yeah, let's go. Um, if you want to see the stats, this is why I think it's going to be really good. Base, 12 might. Army attack, it's going to be increasing it for men and elves, which of course is his troop combinations, we'll get into that. But the army HP buff for rangers, dunes, and rangers of the north is going to be absolutely insane. Here we go. You have proved your worth, and for this I am grateful. Only when Mordor's minions are gone, may the realms of men truly thrive. Is that it? Okay, I thought it would be something a little bit better. We have Narsil, guys. Oh my god, look at it. Look how cool it looks. Okay, we are swapping that over right now. We have Narsil. I don't think anyone's ever done a video on this. I've seen a couple of people have it like in the reports and stuff like that. Like, in the game reports and that. And now it is time to strengthen this bad boy up. Let's start. We're going to be using the Axe of Kazik Doom. But don't worry, we will get axes back so we can make ones later on. Um, so let's get into it. I'm not sure I like if this is going to be a plus 6 uh, HP or what, but this is going to be a really good buff by the end of it. Alright, so now we've got all our worn out gold gear. But yeah, this is going to be fantastic. I might not just have as much might anymore, but these buffs of... Are... Oh my god, it's the buffs are going to be unbelievably good. If I don't have... I should have enough gold weapons. Uh, if worse comes to worse, I can rip down a Lang or something like that. But yeah, um, with refining this weapon, I don't know if I'll ever be refining it. Because I have to save about like 100 gold mithril or something. Oh my days, it is going to be plus 6 HP. That is just broken OP. Oh my days. Okay, so we need four more. I don't really want to get rid of my axes. Um, so, yep, this is going. Don't really need it. Don't really need the Ling. Uh, I have to take it off. Um, I have to uh, take it off real quick. So just give me one second. We'll take that off. Commander... I'm not really using her at the moment. I can work out another piece of gear for her later on. So let's unequip that. And then let's go back to my beautiful man. Who I've almost got level 50 as well. Alright. Strengthen. 
get all these worn outs. We want to keep those axes because they're going to be very useful later on when I want to make another axe. Beautiful, let's go. So we've got a fully strengthened yoke. 36 might. So we're going to get 36 might, but also the big thing. Plus 6 men and elves army attack. And then army HP for Ranger Dunes and Ranger of the North. Plus 6. That's going to be crazy, especially with the build that we're going to be working with. Um, I'm going to be working out if I want to change anything here. This gives me another plus three army HRP, so that's pretty crazy. Um, I don't think... Oh, my days. I know this... I know... Uh, just bear, think with me here. Um, so, Dunes... Oh, my days. I'm thinking about changing and putting this brutal helmet on him. Um, not only will it give us more extra might that we don't have, we will lose this little bit of madness, but he's got the chance to do a lot of madness as it is. But you're going to get even more army HP buff. So I think I'm going to change that over. Um, that gives us army defense for men. Okay, yeah, we're doing a swap. Okay, so we're going to be... We might as well do it now while we're here. So we're going to unequip that. So we're doing a full gear change. Um... King Aragon, I'm sorry, but the extra HP buffs are just going to be unbelievable. And it also gives some um, extra buffs as well. So, let's see. So, we're going to grab this off. It's going to give us extra might, more speed. And it's also going to give us um, damage received on melee a little bit less as well. Because we're going to be using a lot of dunes with this build. So, let's take that off. Oh, okay. I, I definitely have some ideas down the track when I can later on do some changes and that. But, yeah. Alright, let's throw this helmet on. Um, so that's going to be beautiful. Then we can put this better one onto my Gilgalad as well later on. So now we're going to get a plus 3 HP buff there. Um, when we refine this up, another plus 3. Now, I don't think I've got any gear that gives us... Um, this gives us a lot of might and a chance to evade in that. Um, Gear-wise, I don't know if there's anything I could really change to. This gives some good defense to elves and that. It gives good might and that. Um, and you, but we're going to be using mostly man on him, manish units on him, so I think the gear that we have on right now, the chest piece is pretty good, so we're just going to stick with that. But this is probably how my seal door is going to look. Obviously, we need to get these guys up, so I'm going to probably have to hit some uh, mock training and stuff like that. But yeah, keep in mind with all those HP buffs as well, we're also going to get the plus three HP buff here as well, guys. Um, for the dunes, I don't have Ranger of the North at the moment. But yeah, that's basically how the build's going to look. My build's pretty much going to look pretty much the same as what we've got right now. Um, I still want the chance to be able to do Madness and do the extra damage and everything. He's mostly a soldier damage um, commander. Uh, some points into the Dunedain Bloodline increasing men attack plus defense could be useful. Instead of this extra defense, which I don't... Um, if I want to do more attack and damage and that, I might move my points to here. Um, yeah, but we will muck around with that. But that's basically his build and that what's going to be looking like. I now need to refine these guys up. So we're going to get another extra 12 plus 18. So what's that? Like another like 30 might on top of this. So we're going to be back up to like 360 pretty much. Um, and I think it's going to be a pretty solid build. Later on down the track, we could probably um, get this on once I can fully strengthen it. It's going to give allied men damage um, increase and stuff like that. Um, I just don't have the gear at the moment to strengthen this up. But hopefully at the end of the season, I can destroy Aowen Shield. So yeah, guys, that's it. we got Narsil. I'm very happy about that. We'll be back with some PvP soon. Um, obviously, it's just going to take me a few hours. But for you, it will be momentarily. Um, I just got to get him fully refined back up. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then basically get him into some battles and that. So, yeah, super hyped, guys. Also, I also forgot to talk about the special ability Sun and Moon Splendor as well, guys. Um, if you're using all men, which we're not going to be doing, um, you get a 15% chance for the target to succumb to madness. But uh, if we're running men and elves, which we're going to be doing, we have a 15% chance to remove a buff from the target when your army is comprised. So, yeah, we're going to be able to uh, remove buffs from their side. It's going to be really, really good. Rightio, guys. So, we're going to be getting into some PvP very soon with Isildur. I've had to take him across map because I can't move at the moment. Uh, 
few things first. I did make a gear change. Um, as you can see, um, I put the Warborn Battle Plate um, on him. I talked to uh, a bunch of members in my team and stuff like that. And this is what we think would be the best option. So I've run that. Um, with his skilling, this is the skill that I'm, I'm running. I'm actually using no madness. Uh, we're going with a full build where we're going to be able to do a lot of troop damage. Um, as well as, of course, we're going to be working with those dunes with the follow-up and buffing their HP. Um, but as you can see, we've got a plus 3 HP there. Uh, maximum of 4 points in Dunedai Bloodline. After that, it becomes obsolete and doesn't really do anything. So um, that's them points there. Obviously, we're running uh, the troop combination I'll show you in a moment. Um, we get another plus 2 HP from men there. As well as free peoples, the minus 14% damage reduction stacked on top of this is extremely good. And then we're running coalition because men have a 75% chance to deal highest damage, which can be a huge difference. And then elves have a chance to gain initiative. Now, as for the troop combination, um, I'm going to show you this is the troop combination I'm using. I think it's absolutely perfect. Um, I'm running 4,000 dunes, which is the perfect amount. As you can see with the buffs, everything's looking fantastic. Um, we have 61 defense on them. That's before they even get into battle with the buff. 54 HP. So this thing, 54 times 4,000. Um, so I think that's like over like 200 something thousand HP already just from the dunes. Really good speed levels and the maximum damage, 75% chance. So imagine 4,000 instead of being in times 23 and doing like 80,000 or whatever, um, you're going to be doing uh, times this for whatever, like not 80,000, 18,000 or whatever it is. And then instead you could be doing like 21,000 or something. So it can make a big difference. Um, then we have um, the Cavaliers, which I probably could change this skill because it's not doing a lot with the Rise Up, but I use Rise Up on a lot of my other commanders. But we are getting men HP buffs here as well. Um, 50 defense, 160 speed. You're going to be outspeeding a lot of people here. And then the March Wardens are fantastic as well. They do a lot of um, early damage. And I've got all these guys level 3. So we've got the Elven buff. Um, we've also got double manish um, XP here. Rightio guys. So this is the skilling that I'm usually going to be using. I think this will be better versed evil. Um, but... I'm going to be versing some very strong dwarves here at the moment, and they don't run a lot of like ranged units and stuff like that. And I was looking at this more in detail, and this is more of a percentage, like a 75% chance. Uh, this damage reduction is good, but I feel like um, giving madness in the first round and getting an extra 40% damage early is going to make a big difference. So we are going to do a reskilling again here. So. I'm still going to be running the dunes on very high HP and everything like that. Um, we are also going to be running this, which reduces the enemy's uh, first round. They're going to do minimum damage. And then after that, we're going to be doing plus 40%. Um, and then, of course, we're going to be running this skill, which here, which reduces damage done by 90% with men and elves in the army only. With elven attack and men HP plus 2. But then, um, I want to be running... Um, consequence of greed. So for the first round, I've got a hundred percent chance to inflict madness. Um, now this is going to do it against every single target. Um, and then, so then that means for the first round, every uh, hit that I do against his army is going to do an extra forty percent extra damage. And if I get the follow up on my dunes, I'm going to get twice that amount of damage. So that's why I want to run that. Uh, and then we're just going to run the four points in Dunedain Bloodline. So this is another build which I think is going to work better um, against things. Now, this guy's trying to steal my attacks. I want that attack. So I'm going in. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry, mate. But yeah, you go. I want to go in for an attack. So EJ's going in for that one. Sorry, I'm recording at the moment. Um, but I'll let him attack that Thaden and stuff. And then my Thaden's here. Uh, you know what I'll do? I'll go in right now with my Theoden against this huge, insane Gimli. Um, just so he doesn't, um, like, use that one against me. But yeah, I, I really wanted Isildur to do a battle. Um, I, I have convoyanced all of these armies and that. So, uh, they're, they're no slouch armies as well, as you'll see. They're all level 50s. Um, we're going to be going up against quite a very strong level 50. Um, so, it looks like he's going to be protecting with his Theoden here. 
Um, so it looks like we got into a battle there. Did I fight his Gimli or did his Gimli leave? I absolutely destroyed the Gimli. Oh my god. Okay, we don't even want to look at that. Okay, now I think he's going to be using his Thaden here against my Asildor. So this is going to be very interesting because Thaden is very strong. Okay, we got in a draw. Let's have a look. Okay, we burst while in. Okay. That's some pretty good results. We um, are level 50 while in. Okay, the Dunes absolutely shredded. He had some archers there, so that helped a lot. So let's have a look at the damage ratings. Um, 231 to 226, so pretty even there. Um, overall, this is um, a pretty pretty good. Um, I need to look at his gear. Okay, he's got really good gear. Um, he had the chance to inflict some madness as well. Um, he had the, he had some evade there. Um, so I'm just having a look to see what he had. So gear-wise, not bad. Had a pretty good troop combination. I'm pretty happy with that. Um, this build is probably not the best for um, Isildur um, fighting dwarves. Uh, well, it's the best I can possibly do. But it, he's more um, designed to verse evil than that. But overall, I'd say it's a very solid battle there. Definitely would take that. Um, like, pretty even against... A, like, Dwadlin is a big um, commander, damage commander. So I think that was quite nice. Um, we'll have to um, back him off. Um, and test him out. Um, obviously, I'm going to have to restore him back up in that. But after doing the madness test and that, we'll have a look and see if the madness did um, any effects in that in the actual battle breakdown. But I think the extra 14% damage reduction and the chance to do extra damage would have been the better build now that I've seen that. But everything's trial and error, isn't it? So, um, so let's see. So Cavaliers attacked... Uh, I got I, I got affected by madness there. My dunes did attack. Um, they didn't. They did not get dual blows though. But they did eighteen thousand damage there. Okay, so the first round I didn't do a lot of damage, even with the madness. We did eighteen thousand damage. Ah, uh, okay. Cavaliers got stunned there. We did get follow up here, which did nineteen thousand, then seventeen thousand. So and then yeah, okay. I I think madness is definitely not the way to go, guys. Um. So, yeah, in saying that, we learned something. I think definitely the build that I had before is definitely going to be better. Just in the case of the fact that um, after round one, this runs out. Um, and I'm no longer doing any madness damage. So, I kind of overlooked that. So, we're going to go back with our original build that gives us a chance to do maximum damage. And we also get that 14% uh, damage reduction. So, yeah, trial and error, without a doubt. Definitely trial and error. Like... That was definitely, that was a great um, battle, nonetheless, against a very good geared level 50 Dwalin, who we all know is a very strong all-round commander. He did have one level on me, but that's pretty much nothing, and my gear is probably a bit better than his. Um, so, yeah, basically, we're just going to have to re-strengthen up here, get all my um, skills in that reset up. And we're going to have to reinforce him. But because I'm going across the map at the moment, it may take just a little while um, before I can reinforce him. It may take a little while. As you can see, 47 minutes. So, yeah. Um, let's have a look. So, troop combination. Because we're versing dwarves, I don't think we're going to need as many um, things. So, I think maybe if we run a 1,000 of these guys, 3,300, and run maybe 1,200 of these guys, and then there. 3,500. It's a little bit less, but it's going to be doing a little bit less damage, but it's still going to be really good with the HP. But actually, no, I'm going to run a 1,000 Marge Wardens, I think. Just run a 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, 1,000, and then run 3,900. Boom, this should go down a little bit. So it's going to be a 47-minute reinforce, so yeah. But you guys will see it um, very quickly. And yeah, we we'll change the skilling, so it's going to be different now. We'll test out the skilling and that. Um, yeah, and we'll go from there. If you want to quickly just see that Thaden, I, I just quickly looked over it. It was just, yeah, that was broken. Just too broken. Holy moly. Right now, guys, so I've done a little bit of changing. Um, I was mucking around with a few builds and stuff like that. I've got it going for an attack in a moment. So I've got it so um, I'm not really using any of the elves. It's just there so I can get the buff from the R5. But we're going to be running a hell of a lot more dunes this time for high HP. So we're running more, um, a bit more extra defense this time with the catters instead of the cavaliers. So we're not going with as much damage, but more a defensive route, but a higher HP buff. Because with my gear that I'm using on my sealed ore, 
especially with the helmet. Um, it's buffing um, HP melee as well, as well as my gear is buffing um, melee for defense and speed. So I mostly don't really need any elves there. I just need them just there so that my R5 works. Um, so I get the effect. So basically I've just got the 50 March Wardens there for that effect. Um, and yeah, we're basically working on that pretty much now. I'm just working my way up here. Gandalf the White just took this tile. So I'm just going to top his troops back up like so. And then we're marching against this army. Hopefully it'll be, I don't know. It could be nothing here. It could be something. Hopefully it's an army. We'll find out in just a moment. Isildur will be attacking and we can hopefully get some good PvP results uh, with this build. I'm very interested to see what my HP is going to be. Um, because we are running a lot of Dunes of 5800 and a thousand of these guys as well, which have 106 HP with the buff. So, um, I'm very interested to see how much HP we're going to have uh, with this build. Um, also do want to try the build as well with sealed or um, having just like 7,000 Dunes as well and see what happens. Alright, so that might have been, a, it was an A one. Let's have a look. Oh my god, we had 412 412. I don't think it was much anything there. Okay, it was a level 39 Eowyn. We could, with this build, guys, we have 423,000 HP. Oh my god, that's like my Theoden build. This build is actually insane. Um, not a very strong battle, of course. Um, but that gives us an idea of how much HP he can have. And 423,000 is absolutely insane, guys. Uh, this is a pretty good build, I think. I'll definitely be sharing that one out. But yeah, uh, unfortunately, nothing spectacular there as in battle-wise. Um, but yeah, I think just having the minimum 50 there, a 1,000 of these guys for the defense. And then just 5,800 of these guys is crazy. So yeah, that is a lot of HP. Rightio, guys. So we're going to get in into some more PvP with a sealed door at the moment. I got into some PvB earlier, um, which I'll show you down here real quick. But I've got to be real quick to protect this tile. So we might have to... Yeah, we'll check that out in just a second. We've got 23 seconds here. I don't know what's coming up here. But we're going to use a seal door here and see what happens. Um, so we've got about 15 seconds and we'll see how we go with the results. So three. We'll do this when there's about five seconds to go. So they can't back away. Boom. There we go. Let's see uh, what happens here. Looks like they're going to send another command as well. Interesting. All right. So it looks like we go. Oh, we'll go to Thaden. Let's have a look. Okay. So we versed a level 50 Thaden. We all know Thaden is very strong. This Thaden has quite decent gear and has. Looks like they're running rides up as well. And as you can see, we absolutely destroyed them. 136 to 351,000 uh, damage there, guys. Um, we're also going to just re-top him back up. We don't we don't even really need them. It's more to do with the um, with that. Let's do that. Two minutes. Uh, they are going to be sending someone back up in two minutes. So, and we've got a reinforcement time in two minutes. So we could get another battle happening with Isil Door. I showed the other battle. We versed a. Gandalf the Grey a little bit earlier. Um, I had a lot going on. I was going a bit crazy and stuff like that. But um, if I can scroll down and find that. Wow, that was four hours ago now. That one wasn't too good because I was already like pretty much dead. Uh, but we versed a Gandalf the Grey here uh, with tier four and Woses and that. And as you can see, we did 200,000 to 98,000. Uh, but yeah, all in all, my Isildur is doing very well. That last battle there was extremely good though. Against in the sealed door, we did a lot of damage. These catters are working um, extremely well. Um, as you can see, we had uh, 410,000 HP. With the build that I've got going now, when I only run 50, I have around about 420 something thousand HP. It's pretty insane. Rightio, so I just woke up actually, um, and I was attacked 69 times out of all numbers while I was asleep for about four hours. Um, but yeah, I wanted to show you a report that we had, um, and it was against a sealed door here. So 
I had this troop combination here um, of 1,000 March Wardens, 950 Cavaliers, and 4,000 on the Dunes. And we went up against this state in here, which looks like it was almost full health. It might have been like about 5,000 HP um, down. Um, but as you can see, um, we did very well. We did 330,000 damage to 194,000. Um, so we've done very well there. Um, he wasn't running the Rise Up build, which was a good thing. Uh, would have done a bit of extra damage for sure. Um, but as you can see, he had that's quite a decent Daedon in my opinion. He's got plenty of respect there. Um, he's got the sword that. These guys could be leveled up, but he has stun and madness immunity, which wouldn't have affected too much. But yeah, so as you can see, a sealed door versus a level 50, pretty decent Daedon. We've done quite well there with those results. Right here, guys. So before we wrap it up, there's a couple of, I've been um, doing a lot of PvP. So as you can see, um, we use this troop combination here, which um, I used a lot more of the Dunes and March Wardens and just had the Catters as just the extra defense there for my buff for the R5. But as you can see, we versed a really good Theoden. I'd like, that is a good Theoden. Really good Theoden there. Um... And absolutely destroyed him, as we can see. Like, uh, we did 337,000 damage there to 153,000. Uh, we got into a fight here against Gilgalad, uh, level 50. With, um, not the best of gear, unfortunately, though. So, and not the highest respect or gear. So, we'll definitely, definitely take that into account. Um... But yeah, we absolutely destroyed that Gilgalad there. But yeah, um, his gear wasn't the best. And he doesn't have the highest of skilling in that there by the looks of it. So yeah, we, it, that Gilgalad would have definitely done a lot better. But the Dunes absolutely helped a lot there. We're just going through to see if we can find any more. Usually I just look for the ones where it says draw. Um, and then that means you've had a pretty good battle there. But yeah, I've been pretty busy. These are like quite a while ago. And yeah, we'll show this last one for um, a good wrap up. So this was a battle where I used some Sentinels in here and I mixed it up a little bit. So I used a lot of different troop combinations. And we again, went against a very strong level 50 Gilgalad. And as we can see from the results, we actually won against Gilgalad as well. So yeah, we're absolutely like battling. The only ones you're really going to have trouble with is with, like, big boys like Dane. Um, they do a lot of commander damage. That's probably his only weakness there. Um, there is a slight ways around it, but, yeah, pretty much, um, if you're going to be running, the, if you know a huge Dane's coming, if you want to quickly change to the Madness build, the Madness is going to help you a bit if they don't have any Madness. But, yeah, we're going to wrap it up, guys. I hope you guys enjoyed. It was a very long video, a lot of stuff to do with the sealed door. And until next time, peace out, EJ's out, and I'll catch you guys later. See ya.